Hello everyone and welcome to another soda documentary and happy birthday. If it's anyone's birthday out there, happy birthday to you too. But it's also my birthday. But instead of you giving me a gift, I'm giving you guys a gift. So I'm doing what Jesus would do on his birthday. So today I am being Jesus. So for my birthday, I am giving you guys a soda documentary. Now I know you would rather have a PS4 or an Xbox One. Okay, maybe not on Xbox One, but I'm a college student with a part-time job. I can't buy you guys everything. Anyway, enough lollygagging, on to the documentary. Moxie is a rather unique soda, as its flavor has made it not only famous, but also hated. A lot like the opinions of Big Red, either you love it or hate it. Now, Moxie is older than most soda companies, even older than Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper, so we have a lot of history here. Moxie originated as a patent medicine called Moxie Nerve Food, which was created around 1876 by Dr. Augustin Thompson in Lowell, Massachusetts. Thompson claimed that it contained an extract from a rare, unnamed South American plant, which had supposedly been discovered by a friend of his, Lieutenant Moxie, who had used it as an elixir. Moxie, he claimed, was especially effective against anything from nervousness to insomnia. After a few years, Thompson added soda water to the formula and changed the product's name to Beverage Moxie Nerve Food by 1884. He was then selling Moxie both in bottles and in bulk as a soda fountain syrup. He marketed it as a delicious blend of bitter and sweet, a drink to satisfy everyone's taste. Like most sodas, there are bound to be famed people who enjoy the drink. The 30th president, Calvin Coolidge, was known to love the drink, and Boston Red Sox slugger Ted Williams endorsed it on the radio and in print. The company also marketed a beverage called Ted's Root Beer in the early 60s based off the Boston Red Sox player Ted Williams. E.B. White once claimed that Moxie contains Jetane Root, which is a path to good life. White was right, as one of the ingredients of Moxie is Jetane Root, which may contribute to the drink's unique flavor. Up until 1920, Moxie was actually outselling the big Coca-Cola. But by the 1930s, the brand was starting to decline in sales, which is thought to have been caused by the company's decision to expand its sugar reserves at the expense of its popular advertising campaign. A few years after the Great Depression, Moxie was split into two companies with Effie Thomas, the inventor's son, as president of the Moxie Company, and with Frank Archer serving as vice president. The Moxie Company retained bottling rights in New England. The other half of the company was Moxie Company of America, with Frank Archer serving as president, and this organization had the right to distribute Moxie over the entire nation, with the exception of New England. Sugar-Free Diet Moxie was introduced in 1962, about the same time that Mad Magazine began placing Moxie logo in the background of its articles to increase public awareness of it. As a result of Mad's efforts, sales of the soft drink increased 10%. This led to the Mad About Moxie campaign. The Moxie brand was purchased in 1966 by the Monarch Beverage Company of Atlanta. In 1968, Moxie decided to change things to see if they could help their sales. This is when Moxie reintroduced a new Moxie with a nice new sweeter taste and a nice new bottle with a pretty flower child holding it. But Moxie almost overnight lost almost half of its customers. Moxie then reverted to old-fashioned Moxie with a label and images similar to those of the 50s. Ted Williams was re-established briefly to try to bring back fans. Many people speculated where Coca-Cola took this as a strategy when Coca-Cola changed their flavor to New Coke in 1985. In 2007, Monarch sold its current ownership to Corn Ucopia Beverages of Brefford, New Hampshire, which is owned by Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Northern New England and subsidiary of the Curran Brewing Company based in Tokyo. In its decision to set up efforts to distribute the product, Corn Ucopia decided to increase requests for Moxie from fans across the country. In 2007, it launched a pilot sales in Florida and in 2011 granted distribution in Florida to Florida Micro Beverage Distributors. In 2011, Cornucopia created the Moxie Beverage Company to market Moxie and Moxie branded products. A website Drink Moxie was created to promote Moxie and drink recipes using Moxie were created. Demand for Moxie has waned in the recent years, although the brand persists in New England and Pennsylvania. Moxie is also very well known in pop culture. In the video game franchise Borderlands, there is a character named Mad Moxie. She is a middle-aged woman who runs a bar as well as a Coliseum-style arena called Mad Moxie's Underdome, 
where she pits mercenaries, bandits, and various violent animals against one another, and then broadcasts the fights across the entire planet. Moxie is mentioned in the independent film Man with a Plan, and also in the movie Small Apartments. There is even a Moxie Museum in Union, Maine, which houses a 30-foot tall wooden Moxie bottle once used as a soda stand and other historical Moxie artifacts. Every summer, all things Moxie are celebrated at the Moxie Festival in Lisbon Falls, Maine. Moxie has a lot of history and it's been around for over a hundred years, but it's only stayed that long because of its flavor. Let's see what people think. Patrick and his friends from Soda Tasting try this unique flavored soda. Good reviews and appreciation. I'm Patrick O'Keefe and uh, this is from the Moxie Beverage Company. It was introduced again in 1884. Uh, from their website it says, quote, Moxie has a distinction of being, has a distinction of being described as both quote, a great soda, great tasting soda, and quote, an acquired taste, and quote. However you describe it, one thing is for sure, it takes a special kind of moxie to try it for the first time and to love it forever. Live your life with moxie. Buy some. Oh. Yeah, man. Let's... Nice little smoke <coughs> across the top there. I can already smell it. Don't breathe this noise. Yeah. Um, wrong yeah. show. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. All right. Well, giving the uh, glowing uh, preface you two provided, I'm uh, very nervous now. That's it. I'm gonna, just going to review it straight, fair, because I really don't have a specific memory of what it tasted like. So let me... Let me. Oh, there's a strong like Ugh. licorice scent there, isn't there? I don't like that. That's that Ugh. root, I guess. That root what extract. Whew. I can tell this. Yeah, I mean, oh. the first smell of it, it almost smells like it's going to be a cola a little bit, but then something else hits yeah. you, and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like spice! Is there a such thing as an after smell of some... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alright, what do you yeah, say? Yeah, I guess we'll toast yeah. this one. Tamoxi. 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 Oh god. It's like cola and root beer had a very, very ugly baby. <laughs> it, it doesn't have any taste. You know what I was recognizing? Hang on. No, there's like no aftertaste. It tastes like. You know, it tastes like Coke and root beer if you go in that combination. It tastes like it's flat. Yeah, exactly. Like Thank you. Completely flat. I was missing yeah, something. That's like... it. Coke and root beer had a, mixed together and flat. <laughs> had a flat baby. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting observation, I think, because when you mention that, I do kind of taste that. You taste notes of the cola, notes of the root beer. You know, that flatness is almost like a weakness of flavor. Um, but there's something else there that's kind of like this overarching taste. Yeah, maybe that root extract there, that thing, mm. it's kind of like an extra. Yeah, I taste that. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not just an aftertaste. It's a, it's a before taste, a during taste, and, and an aftertaste. It's a lingering taste. Even I haven't had a sip in a while, but I still yeah. feel it in the back of my like throat menthol. a little bit. Like menthol. Yeah. But I mean, it's not as terrible as I was prepped for, I think. Right. It's not horrendous, but at the same time, it's just I, I can't it's not pleasant. My, it's not I can't pleasant. see myself buying another bottle. No. Right. Like ever. It's not pleasant, and uh, you know, I'm curious to see how this... Uh, compares to the high fructose corn syrup version, and maybe we'll do that in a future episode. Um, You're on your own. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, final judgment. What do we think as far as sodas? Would you drink this again? How, how does it sit? You know, um, at your talk at uh, Indie Comp, I tried some of the pumpkin pie soda. Right, which I gave a, a one recently. Yeah, and I think it's a hair better than that for me. So go there, I guess is what I would say. And that ballpark is. I mean, I didn't have the pumpkin pie, but I would have to agree. It's 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 pretty rough. Um, I can never, <laughs> ever imagine drinking this again in my life. You know, if this if this is Moxie, I don't want Moxie. Like, I, yeah, don't, I, mean, want, the, the, I don't need it. If the most you, you, want, you want spunk. I want spunk. <laughs> <laughs> spunk. I want confidence soda. Where's that one? Yeah, you want confidence soda. Um, you know, and it's interesting because I was thinking about how it compares to the pumpkin pie soda, the main root pumpkin pie soda, um, which I tasted a lot of spice and I gave a one. And I think that, um, you know, I do like it a little bit more. And I think because of that, I want to give Moxie with sugar a 1.5 out of 5 stars. And that's what I'm going to go with it. Hey, hey guys, it's Tyler and Steven, of course. And we're going to be reviewing a soda that a lot of people and it was actually created a year before Dr. Pepper, created before Pepsi and Coke and everything. Moxie, and it has that, uh, looks like it was a command for the handy for some reason. Note that this is not a cola, but instead an original elixir. Actually, I don't even know what flavor it really is, because it doesn't have it. I know they have our flavor, I know they have orange cream, and I think they have a root beer, but 
I'm not sure this might be a cola, but it just doesn't say. Because it's uh, just a simple soda without much to go by it, I'm, get, I'm just going to say it's a cola. Okay, but uh, also I was going to say this. Um, you know how pretty much you either like a soda or a hate soda, like Big Red? It's the same thing here. This has a lot of mixed reviews. So, I think the, we... word, the word you're looking for critically is polarized. Yeah. Love it or hate it, there's usually no in between, so... Okay, so let's try this uh, Moxie soda. Whoa. What? That is a... That has one hell of a weird smell that's... Okay, so it's like I smell a black licorice, but I also smell like it's almost like there's syrup and molasses. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, though. I'm mostly smoking the black licorice. My nose is a little stuff in the morning. Yeah, because we have allergies. But it's a lot different than I expected. Well, here's Moxie. Second to rest and see if you have like a weird bitterness in your mouth. Uh, I'm definitely feeling it. Yeah, what the? <laughs> oh, can't wait for those hot dogs and onion rings now. Yeah, but what the? Um. Okay. Um. So someone I know, so Patrick from So Tasting, he said he always hated this. I think I do too. <laughs> it's uh. I don't even. I mean, you taste a lot of black licorice. It's not like like. Here's essentially how I'm describing this soda. Um, it sort of tastes like root beer a little at first, but the aftertaste it leaves in your mouth is just. Mm, it's like it, pure it's, bitterness. Yeah, like you, you know that area of the tongue that's designated the taste bud for bitterness. Uh, it's it's working hard right now tasting this soda. Mm. <laughs> Not a fan, not a fan, not a fan. I don't know if this is like, uh, if they could make an aftertaste taste like the first initial taste of the soda, yeah. then it could be basically like root beer, which wouldn't make it much of an original elixir, but fine, you want it to be original? Well, you're an original pile of crap. <laughs> it, um, it but at least you can claim you're original. I hope you're happy about that. <laughs> so, your rating? My rating is going to be, since this didn't give me the, oh god, I wanna just spit it out right now, a big red, it's getting, I'm gonna say a three out of 10, just because initially it tastes like root beer, which I, I've always found okay, but, then the bitterness really the, the hits. The bitterness is... And there's, there's a lot of black licorice in this, I can tell, and I hate black licorice. As do I. Um, it's pretty much everything. He said, uh, this is the first time we're actually going to have the same exact rate. I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. It's... Ugh, I just don't know. I mean, starts the decent. smell even seems a little bit sickening to me. It's sad. Yeah. But there's fans for this, so... See what you love, but good for you. Co comment and tell what it is you're tasting, because I don't think it's the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I, I love the Distinctively different. I mean, Distinctively I... Distinctively crap! <laughs> no, the reason why I say that is because Big Reds, their motto is deliciously different, and this is distinctively different. I don't know if I want to buy sodas now that say that they're different, because the last two haven't been good for me. I mean... The soda was unique, yes, but that doesn't always mean good. The soda was described accurately though, from the advertisements, bitter and sweet, but from what me and Steven said, we didn't enjoy it that much. But as always, there have been several sodas on this show that we didn't enjoy, but I still say try the soda. It has something unique and different, and who knows, you may enjoy it yourself, as many have over the past hundred years. Even though it has faded in popularity, it is still loved and bought by its fans. 
Go out there and try this soda. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to keep updated on new videos. Also check out my Facebook and Twitter. This is Tyre from the Big R Review, signing off.